Hello, this is Derek. How can I assist you? Hi, Derek. Uh, can you send an email for me? Of course. I'd love to help you send an email. Who is it going to and what's it about? Can you find Mark in my contact list? Oh, you want to send an email to Mark? Yeah. I'm... Okay, great. The email about? Uh, the email is about um, us going golfing tomorrow. Okay, so you want to send an email to Mark about going golfing tomorrow. Got it. Just a sec while I send that for you. Done and done. I sent that email to Mark for you. Anything else I can help you with? Yeah, no, that's it. Uh, thanks so much. Have a good day. You're very welcome. I'm glad I could help. Have a great day as well. All right, so this was an AA agent sending an email. Mark is uh, in my list here. Actually, my email that it went to. So we'll start with the webhook. The webhook has um, this URL that it generates. And, uh, and I'll show you where to put this, but it's going to go into 11 labs. Uh, so you have options here, which is post, get, head, and all that. The, the path it's using is right here. So you see N8N. Uh, as far as the authentication, uh, you want to use none. And then for the respond, you want to make sure that you're using respond to, respond to wet hook, web hook, <laughs> wet hook. Um, if you're fishing, it's going to be a wet hook. <laughs> uh, but no, it's uh, respond to web hook. Settings, you don't touch that. You don't need to deal with it. And then production, that's going to be uh, a live interaction. So you may not have noticed this, but to, to get started, I clicked on test workflow in order to receive the uh, message from 11 labs. In production, you won't need to click test workflow. Uh, you only do that while you're in test URL mode. Production mode, then the call, the AI agent will just be able to receive the call whenever the call comes through. So uh, then beyond that is the email agent. Email agent has multiple drop downs. You want to use the tool agent for the email agent. You can actually change this heading to call whatever you want. I just called it an email agent because that's what it does. I uh, see here, you're going to want to define the prompt you generate your code essentially by writing in english what you wanted to do and it does that with specific instructions so here it says you're an ai agent responsible for drafting and sending professional emails based on user instructions after the introduction uh, and i'll show you here real quick to jump back because you want to see where the introduction happens this is the introduction that's the first message your anaden workflow knows that is going to start after the introduction, which is in the 11 labs. You have access to two tools, connection data to find email addresses and send mail to compose and send email. So this is you mapping the tool so it knows which tools to use. It could get confused uh, if, it, uh, if it's not mapped, especially if there are more than two tools. So you wanna be clear. And then your objective is to identify the recipient's contact information. So the recipient's contact information is Right, the, right here under contact data. So you want to label this appropriately and we'll go in here so you can see how to set this up too. Let's go back here. Uh, in fact, you know what? I'll duplicate this so that we can toggle a little bit easier. There we go. Okay. Your objective is to identify the recipient's got the information and draft a professional email and sign off as, and you can put whatever you want to put, sign off as, okay, and then before sending. You're going to also let the AI agent know which tools you're going to use and how. The first tool is contact data, right? You've already mentioned it once, but now you're going to be explicit about what it does, what it does with each tool. And here it says that it retrieves the recipient's email address based on their name. If you want it to retrieve by email, then you want to make sure you, you're clear about that. You want to retrieve by email or by phone number. But here you're going to retrieve by name. You're going to give an example is John Doe. I used Mark, right? And then uh, the email address is boom. In here, it knows you give it a name, then that's the email. And if you wanted to retrieve a phone number, then you would retrieve the phone number. And then um, the email address, let's see, sending the email. So you send an email with a subject and body. But if you'll notice here, we only have the two, which is the email, who, uh, or email address, and then the email content. And both of these are defined in 11 labs, and I'll show you where that is. Post header, it's going to be in properties and actually in body. 
So here's body parameters and then in properties. And then here's your two identifier. So you want to sync this up so that your, your two and this two are listed in the expressions in the text field. So these are expressions. And then you have your email content. Let's go back to, let's see, send an email with a subject and body, recipient's email address, email address it defines that. The subject, it lists what the subject is, but it also explains how you want to treat it. You can have custom subjects if you list it in the expressions here. Uh, but what we're doing instead is we're telling the AI to, to define the subject itself and then the body. So this is simpler for you if you just don't have to define your subject yourself. You don't have to treat this as an email. The AI agent can make really good subject lines for you. We can exit out of here. I think that makes enough sense. And if it doesn't, you guys can DM me. Uh, okay, and then the uh, the out component is, um, is this one. So you wanna respond with first incoming item is going to send a response back to the webhook, which is going to be the 11 labs AI agent communicating with your email agent. And then you are giving instructions for the, for both agents to interpret. The interpretation happens here with open AI. You can use other chat models. So you can use GPT-4 and you have other models here. A lot of, you have GPT-3, et cetera, et cetera. You can also choose a different account so you can not use OpenAI at all. You can use Gemini or you can use Llama. You know, there, there are so many options, DeepSeek. Then beyond that, you have your contact data. So here's your Google Sheet account, right? So you're gonna need an API for that. If you have questions on how to get APIs, it's not that difficult. You just go to Google Console and then you'll be able to pull an API from there. So you're going to have your tool description set to automatically. You're gonna get rows. This is your sample, right? So I just, chose real estate because it's pretty easy to make uh, these um, for pretty much any industry but I feel like real estate industry is just an example and then um, you choose the tab that you're going to be pulling this information from so here you'll notice I have different tabs leads data contact data and you want to pull the information from the correct tab and that's it you don't have to do any more beyond that there's nothing in settings the last one is the email so uh, same thing, you're gonna get an API from Google Console. Uh, here's your OAuth uh, API. Then you're gonna set your description to automatic, resources as messages. This is really important. So you'll notice on N8N, it has this message here. Use expressions, dollar sign, from AI, uh, and then whatever the placeholder name is. So from AI means you're not using curl. If you are using some direct expression, uh, like when you're testing your code, for example, you can you can run curl commands to get responses. Actually, I have some examples of curl commands that I've used to run the tests before I used AI. So I didn't want to use up my credits, so I ran curl commands to test to see if it worked. And if it worked, it says, the email confirmation, confirmation has been successful, sent to 10x service, right, which is my email. Um, and you can run multiple different types of curl commands to test different aspects, such as send an email to the contact or check the calendar availability and schedule. You know, the mechanisms exist to do a whole lot more. I deleted this, but I had get availability and I had schedule an appointment. So this was all done through this email agent, but it was doing more than I wanted, so I just deleted it. Then beyond that, you have email type, which is text, and then you write your message as email body again using from ai all right so that's done so that's you know pretty much walked you through all of that and so now let's uh, get into the 11 labs setup all right you are a friendly and funny personal assistant who loves helping the user with tasks on beat upbeat and uh, pro, um, approachable way your role is to assist the user with spend, sending emails when the user provides details like who the email is for uh, and what it's about, you will pass the information to the NADED tool and wait for its response. So here I'm just defining uh, the tool and I'm using single quotes. Once you get confirmation from NADED, the email was sent cheerfully, let the user know it was done. I don't know, you guys can ju judge if it was cheerful enough. You can increase the cheerfulness here, uh, so in through temperature. So here it's going to use much more um, creativity. This would make it a kind of more constricted. You can 
play around with that. It can get goofy if you go all the way to the right. And then keep your tone light, friendly, and witty while remaining efficient and clear in your responses. You don't want to change anything else here until you get the tools. There is an end call feature, which I, I like to use because I want the agent to be able to say, okay, so I guess the conversation's done and it'll, it'll end the call for you, but you could delete that if you wanted to. So remember I mentioned to you that you want to keep the, the name uh, consistent, the path that you defined earlier, headers, path, parameters, query, body parameters. Okay. So you can only set body parameters if you use post, okay? And you need body parameters. And uh, the only two parameters that we talked about earlier is two, the email address of the recipient, either way. Uh, I think we skipped over the description. So let's go over that. So you have a description for the body parameters, okay? Which is different from the prompt. So let's go over what the description is. In a friendly way, ask the user to provide the name of the email recipient and what the email is about unless they already provided the information. And if you remember in that call, I did already provide that information. Uh, in fact, I think I asked, can you get access to my email address, uh, to my contact list, and then can you send an email to Mark? And said yes. What is the message? Uh, so email content is just the body of the email, uh, and you'll notice that there is... There are no other properties for the subject. If you have um, requests for what else you'd like me to build, let me know. Whoever liked the video and wrote a comment, I'll send you guys the JSON file. So you can just take this entire piece, you know, I'll download it, boom. And then if you comment that you liked it and uh, you shared it with uh, some people and you would like this JSON file, I'll send it to you. Or you can email me asking for the file. So that's it. That's all. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.